hello guys welcome back to this channel today is another important basic concept in project management we'll see the terms early start early finish late start let us finish so at the end of this video you will understand what's meant by early start early finish late start and let us finish time for an activity why is it important to know these terms and finally we'll see practical examples on how to calculate the early start early finish late start and latest finish time for activities so on the previous video we have seen about how to calculate a float and float is the amount of time in which an activity can be delayed without affecting the project deadline so we have seen how to calculate float using the critical paths and the non-critical paths. There is also another way, the shortest way to calculate a float, and that is if you know the earliest start, the earliest finish time, the latest start, and the latest finish time, you can calculate float easily. So, let's proceed. So what are early start, early finish, late start and latest finish time for an activity? So the definition is straightforward. So the earliest start is known as the earliest time in which an activity can start. So how early can you start an activity? The time is known as earliest start time. The earliest finish time is the earliest time in which an activity can finish how early can you finish an activity and later start time is the latest time an activity can start how late how late can you start an activity and the latest finish time is the latest time in which an activity can finish how late can you finish an activity so the definition is straightforward but the important point is why is it important to know these four terms why is it important to know these four terms knowing how early can you start an activity and knowing how early can you finish an activity gives you how much freedom you have to move or postpone start activity start data without causing any delay to the project so if you know how early can you move start an activity and how early can you finish an activity you will know how much time or how much freedom you have to move the start date of an activity without causing any delay to the project any delay to the project and knowing the latest start time on activity also has its benefit so suppose you have a network diagram on that network diagram you have a shortest path but this path is other than the critical path remember that critical activities cannot be delayed but if you have an activity on the shortest path other than the critical path you can start late without any delay to the project you can start late without any delay to the project so that's what's meant by later start time so if you know the later start time you can start late without causing any delay to the project similarly if you have the same scenario if you want to know the latest finish time knowing the latest finish time can help you finish late without causing any delay to the project without causing any delay to the project remember that the, the activities must be on the non critical path so as a summary as a summary Knowing the earliest start time, the earliest finish time, the latest start time, and the earth latest finish time gives you freedom. So you can play around with activities. So you can manipulate schedules, manipulate schedules, and you can move start dates without causing any delay to, uh, to the project. So it will give you a freedom. So this is. The basic idea behind early start early finish late start and late finish so how does one calculate the earliest start the earliest finish the latest start and the latest 
finish time for different activities. Suppose you have an activity. This node represents an activity. On this box, you have different terms. On the top left corner, you will always see the earliest start time. On the top right corner, you will see the earliest finish time. On the bottom left corner, you will have the latest start time. On the bottom right corner, you will have the latest finish time. And the float is placed in the middle. So th this is the label to indicate earliest start, earliest finish, late start, late finish, and the float time. So the earliest finish time for an activity will be the earliest start time plus the duration of the activity. So if you want to know the earliest finish time, it is the earliest start time plus the duration of the activity. And the latest start time will be the latest finish time minus the duration. Minus the duration. Suppose you have two activities, activity one and activity two. So within a network diagram, how can you determine the earliest start time, earliest finish time, latest start time, and latest finish time? So let's see that. You have to employ forward path and backward path to determine early start, early finish, late start, and late finish. So during forward path, during forward path, as you go from activity one to activity two, the earliest finish time for activity one will be equal to the earliest start time of activity two. So you are going forward from activity one to two. So the earliest finish time of activity one will be equal to the earliest start time of activity two. Since activity two can start after the completion of activity one. So you are going forward. During backward path, on the reverse path, you are going from activity 2 to activity 1. Hence, the latest finish time of activity 1 will be equal to the latest start time of activity 2. So you are going backward from activity 2 to 1. So the latest start time of activity 2 will be equal to the latest finish time of activity 1. So we employ forward back, forward pass, sorry, to find early start and early finish time, whereas we employ backward pass to determine the late start and late finish time of an activity. Let's see this with a practical example. So you remember this example from previous videos we have seen on how to determine float and critical paths within a network diagram. So, also notice this box, early start time and early finish time are the top left and right corner. Later start time and later finish time are on the bottom uh, corner and float is placed in the middle. So, we'll use these boxes to estimate early start, early finish, late start and late finish. And the duration for each activity is played on the top of the box. You have 4 for activity 8, 2 for activity C, and so on. So let's start. Activity A, when you have activity A, the earliest start time for activity A is 0, since it does not have any preceding activity. So what will be the earliest finish time for activity A? The earliest finish time for activity A is the earliest start time for activity A plus the duration. So 0 plus 4 makes 4. So we are employing forward path. For activity B, the earliest start time for activity B will be equals to the earliest finish time of its preceding activity which is activity A. Since activity B can start after the completion of activity A, the earliest start time for activity B is equals to the earliest start, uh, sorry, the earliest start time for activity B will be equal to the earliest finish time of activity A, so 4. So the early finish will be the earliest start plus its duration 
we have 7 for activity C the earliest start time for activity C will be the earliest start time for activity A the earliest finish time for activity A so we have 4 so the earliest finish time for activity C is the earliest start time which is 4 4 plus 2 makes 6 the earliest start time for activity F is equals to the earliest finish time for activity C which is 6 so the earliest finish time will be 6 plus 1 which is 7 the earliest start time for activity G will be equal to the earliest finish time for activity F so we have 7 the earliest finish time for activity G will be the earliest start time plus duration we have 9 for activity D the earliest start time will be 0 since activity D does not have any preceding activity the earliest finish time with the earliest start time 0 plus the duration 3 the earliest start time for activity E will be 3 the earliest finish time will be 3 plus 4 which is 7 similarly the earliest start time for activity H will be 7 the earliest finish time will be 7 plus 4 11 so we have done the forward pass to determine the earliest start earliest finish time for every activity in the network diagram so what will be the earliest finish time so the total completion time for the project is 11 days it is not 7 it is not 9 it is 11 so this is the critical path the critical path is d e h so we'll employ the backward path to determine the latest start and the latest finish time so we'll use 11 days as the latest finish time and always start with the critical path so we'll start with h so the latest start time for activity h will be the latest finish time minus not plus minus its duration so 11 minus 4 you have 7 the latest start time for activity sorry the latest finish time for activity e will be equal to the latest start time of activity h so it will be 7 so the latest start time for activity e is the latest finish time minus the duration so 7 minus 4 you have 3 so the latest start time for activity the latest finish time for activity d is the latest start time for activity e so 3 and the latest start time will be 3 minus 3 0 Next, for activity G, which is the longest uh, path, A, C, F, G, this is the longest path, so we start from that, so we use 11, not 9. Since the total time to complete the project is 11, do not use this 9, use 11. So 11 minus 2, it will give you 7, sorry, 9. 11 minus 2 give you 9. Similarly, the latest uh finish time for activity f will be nine nine minus one we have eight the latest finish time for activity c will be c eight eight minus two will have six for activity b the latest finish time is 11 and the total time to complete the project is 11 11 minus three you have eight now for activity a which latest start time do we use should we use 6 or 8 since activity A is related to activity C and B on such cases or such scenario you have to use the minimum value what is the minimum value so the latest start time the latest sorry the latest finish time of a preceding activity in this case activity A is equals to the minimum of the latest start time of its succeeding activities which is B and C 
So we'll take the minimum later start time of activity B and C, which is the minimum is from 8 and 6 is 6. So we'll use 6. So the latest start time for activity A will be 6 minus 4. We have 2. So using backward pass, we have determined latest time and latest finish time for each activity. Calculate the float. Float is calculated either later start minus early start or latest finish minus earliest finish. You can use either of these formulas to calculate the float. So for activity A, for example, 6 minus 4, 2. 2 minus 0, 2. For activity B, 8 minus 4, 4. 11 minus 7, 4. Activity C, 8 minus 6, 2. 6 minus 4, 2. 8 minus 6, 2. 9 minus 7, 2. Activity G, 11 minus 9, 2. 9 minus 7, 2. Activity D, E and H is 0. You can see that 11 minus 11, 0. 7 minus 7, 0. E, 7 minus 7, 0. 3 minus 3, 0. D, 3 minus 3, 0. And 0 minus 0 is 0. You can see that activities on the critical path does not have any float. So the float for any activity on the critical path is zero. One way of checking your results is, is the values from this formula, the two formula must be the same. So if your value, if your value from later start minus early start is different from later finish to early finish, then you have made some mistake during your automatic calculation if you have to go back and do it again. So this is the way that you calculate earliest start, earliest finish, late start, and latest finish time of activities. So if you find this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys.